Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. This is Rachel Paul with IAAP and we're glad to have you with us for our second webinar in a series highlighting the Zero Project 2020 ICT Educational Innovative Awardees. Before we get started, there's just a few items I'd like to go over. All of the attendee lines are muted to prevent any background noise or disruptions. Closed captioning is available. You can select a closed captioned icon on your, in your Zoom screen, or there, I just posted in the chat a few minutes ago a third-party link if you would like that option. We will have questions and answers. Uh, you are welcome throughout the, the webinar today to post your questions in the chat or in the Q&A box, and we will get to those as time permits. Today's webinar will be recorded and we will have that available on a special YouTube channel and I will also post the link to that YouTube channel in the chat as we get started. Uh, there was also in the chat was posted if you'd like to join the WhatsApp community to continue the conversation, uh, you're welcome to do that and you can select that link. And I think that is all I need to go over and I'm gonna turn it over to Michael Femba. Thank you. Uh, Michael, I think you're muted. So um, welcome to the uh, ICT Educational Global Innovations webinar, uh, which is uh, hosted by the Zero Project. Uh, uh, G3 ICT and the International Association of Accessibility Professionals, short IAAP. Actually, it's, um, it's a series that we started uh, last week. Uh, so it's uh, season one, episode two uh, that we're currently in. Um, last week, we started with uh, a, a great uh, intro by uh, Brad Turner, who introduced the Benetech um, and Bookshare model. Uh, this time, as we uh, all know, it will be uh, Fundacion Once uh, from Spain and uh, Natalie Gonzalez and Alejandro Rodriguez as Casa will introduce their free online training for professionals on applying ex accessibility guidelines. And there's a third one next week. Uh, it will be uh, Vasidis Giannopoulos uh, from Sci-Fi, an open source um, um, electronic game for, for children. So um, you'll see the people now on your screen uh, that are behind uh, this um, webinar. So that's me, Michael Fembeck. I'm a uh, program manager of the ESL Foundation and director of the Zero Project. It's Christopher Lee, who is the IAAP managing director. It's Ricardo, Ricardo Garcia Bahamonde, an international consultant who takes care of all the, the storytelling and, and, and writing up and summarizing and telling the story of, of it all. Uh, Sima Mondekar, who is from our team, from the Esla Foundation, who takes care of all the communications and social media, and Rachel, who is in charge of all the, the technicalities and, and making this possible at all. Um, before I hand over to David, um, who I'm going to introduce uh, when I'm finished with my intro, uh, who is, will take uh, care of us and moderate the whole session, I got three more messages that I wanted to share with you why this webinar and why, uh, why these uh, three peaks of, um, of, um, of uh, GSR ICT and, uh, and us, why uh, Benetech, Fundacion Ons and Sci-Fi. Well, there's just one mission behind uh, this whole webinar, uh, which is we uh, want to introduce to them, you to them. We just want to tell, help them tell their stories because we think they're they're unique, they're extraordinary, and their story is worth telling. And it's 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 um, it's uh, uh, really important to put a limelight on them and, and help them share the stories. Um, that's the only reason. So, um, uh, Cheese Rice and 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 Zero Project just agreed that these three are meet all the criteria of being really innovative, of being really replicable and scalable, and having a high impact. So this was this were the three criteria. And the only mission of what we're doing here is to help them tell the story in a, in an, that's the second mission to, uh, to try out new formats, uh, to see what works, uh, to engage with you as a community, uh, to be entertaining, to be interactive and, and find new and creative formats, how to do this. 
Second message, we know it all, it's, it's difficult times. Uh, it's the COVID-19 era. Things are getting much more difficult. It's, it's painful. It's, uh, it's, um, uh, many people are suffering. Uh, on the other hand, these times are also times for new opportunities and, and uh, challenges are met in a, in a different way. Uh, who had thought half a year ago that without any, any doubt and without any second thoughts are tested schools that are, are now online. Just my daughter is sitting one, one, one level below me, one floor below me, and taking an online test uh, in, a, in, a, in a university. The one just six months ago, nobody would have said that's, that's possible, or that's feasible. Now it's happening. Nobody else is, is second guessing this anymore. Who would have thought that uh, working home-based is, 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 is not a new normal? Uh, it's happening. So, and these, these are all opportunities. These are all opportunities for becoming more accessible and more inclusive as a whole society. My, my third and last message um, with the, the Zero Project hat on, uh, we are now currently in our last days of, a, of this year's call for nomination, which is on inclusive employment model and ICT. So there are three, four, five more days uh, where we open. So please take this opportunity. Um, it's a, uh, we got already great nominations, but there's always room for more. So uh, if you have something that you want, think is worth nominating that should get an international limelight, uh, then it's, it's now or never. So come forward and make your nominations, contact us. We, we, we guide you through the, the nomination process uh, if needed. And uh, yeah, we see the outcome. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities if you're, if you're getting selected. One of is being included in a, in a webinar with uh, G3 ICT and, and, and Zero Project, and there will be much more um, opportunities that we hopefully open up for awardees of the Zero Project in the future. Well, thanks uh, for giving me the time to present this. Now, over to you, David, David Baines uh, from uh, David Baines uh, Access and Inclusion um, Consultancy. David is a, an experienced uh, moderator and uh, did an excellent job in last week in, in guiding us and uh, 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 leading us through the, uh, the first uh, webinar. Over you, David, to, to do the same thing as excellently as it did last week. Thank you so much, Michael. That's very kind. Um, it's, it's great to connect to you all again. Um, and I think we've got a, a very interesting uh, and wide ranging discussion uh, to have today to build upon the discussions we had last week. Uh, and it is really interesting when we talk about uh, these webinars, just how wide the audience is coming from the United States, of course, into Europe, in Austria, UK, and of course, Spain, and right across to Saudi Arabia. Um, this is a chance, and I can just see now, uh, include Italy in that discussion. Uh, so we really do have a global audience and a chance to discuss and think about some of the issues uh, that uh, we're going to be talking about today in terms of training around accessibility uh, and access. It's my really great pleasure uh, to introduce uh, both Natalie uh, from Fondation Onthe. Um, I last met uh, Natalie uh, at the Zero Project, uh, which again just says how what a good networking opportunity that is. Uh, but before that, we were sat in a lobby in Washington. Uh, like many, many times, you never actually meet each other in your own countries, but uh, when moving around. And we're also joined by Alejandro, uh, who's going to uh, take part in the interview and, and discussion today. Uh, we've never met, but Alejandro, greetings. It's a great pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to get straight into the questions, but I do want to say to everybody who's, who's here, please do use the uh, chat to post questions. Um, we all keep a very close eye on the chat as it comes up and try to make sure that those questions get included as we get into the discussion. Uh, so they're important to get that uh, input from yourselves. But to start, um, Natalie, tell us a little bit about the Onfe Foundation. As someone who's been to Spain many times, I see the name and the logo everywhere without necessarily knowing who on they are and what you do. So do tell us a little bit. I need to unmute Natalie.
Uh, Natalie, you're muted. I was not aware of new. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was telling you that I, we are very excited to connect with you and to talk about our training goal. Um, about us, we are leading disability organization in Spain. Our main goal is to achieve the full social inclusion of people with disabilities by developing job training and employment opportunities, and also by promoting universal accessibility. We belong to the Onset Social Group, which comprises three organizations. In addition to us, there is Onset. Onset is an acronym for the National Organization with Grand Challenge, and it works for people with vision impairment providing a variety of services and support. The foundation works with all disabilities. Um, there is also Inulion, that is a for-profit company that was created to provide jobs for people with disabilities. Um, the Onset Social Group as a whole provides employment to 70,000 people, of which 58% have a disability. Okay, so and I, I think a lot of people don't always realize that ONCE is uh, something that works with all disabilities in Spain. Um, and I think that is something which is interesting when we come to talk about the training that you've developed. Can you tell us a little bit about the innovation and the training that yes. together you've uh, put online? Well, okay, we have developed set up online training courses in collaboration with the Spanish Royal Board on Disability and the Spanish National Distance Education University. The Royal Board on Disability is an independent body that is attached to the Ministry of Social Rights. And the Spanish National Distance Education, UNED, that is known in Spain, um, is the second largest university in Europe. It has about two 150,000 students enrolled, of which about 8,000 have a disability. Um, we offer seven courses, which are the following. So far, we are adding courses every year, but right now we have seven. Number one, human-computer interaction. This is an introductory course which teaches about the principles of design for all and how to apply to technology. Number two, ICT accessibility in public procurement. This is training about the European standard EN 501-349, which is the equivalent of the American section 508. I'm sure you all know it. Um, for us, this is called very important because a lot of people have trouble understanding it and don't know how to apply. Number three, accessible digital documents. This course is about creating accessible documents such as PDF, Word, PowerPoint. Many blind people find themselves dealing with documents such as invoices or bills that cannot be read with a screen reader. So they need to rely on someone else. The point of this course is to provide an easy way for company employees to learn how to make this document accessible and make it easier mm -hmm. for blind customers. Number four, accessible mobile for all. This course teaches about the accessibility features available in commercial smartphones, where to find those features in the phone and how to activate them. Um, number five, accessible housing for all. The idea of this course is to teach how to transform any room in your home into an accessible space for a member of your household. For example, if you have an old parent coming to live with you, this course gives you the information you need to make your home suitable for, for your parents. Um, number six, accessibility in customer service. This is one of our most successful training courses. It is purpose is to provide guidelines on how to make customer, customer service accessible. Um, the problem with customer service is that it has a lot of barriers. 
it can be a very frustrating experience for a lot of people. It has been for me. I have a lot of trouble dealing with customer service. I can talk over the phone and they seem not to understand that I am deaf. And number seven, disability and active legal defense. This is another of our most successful courses and one of the most innovative. It is offered in easy read format and professors are experts in disability law. Local law. Um, it teaches students how to identify, how to know when they are being discriminated against and what to do about it. Um, it teaches them the resources they have at their disposal to fight discrimination. That's great. So that's a very wide range of training materials that you have developed. Um, and I'm, I'm sort of interested, perhaps yourself and Alejandro, why did, why would, did you decide that these courses were particularly important? How did you choose them and why are they important to people? Well, um, one thing we have noticed at the foundation, and I'm sure Alejandro has noticed too, is that even though there are many resources and guidelines available, there is still a considerable lack of knowledge about accessibility and design for, say, for example, the customer service industry that I just mentioned. It is still highly inaccessible, at least mm. in Spain. I know that in other countries it's better. In the United States, I have had a better experience. But I think it can be improved. The main problem is that most people working in customer service have no idea what to do when they find themselves with a customer with disability. And I'll tell you something else. Um, when the coronavirus hit Spain, the government made available online for everyone to obtain information about the virus and to know what to do if they suspected they were infected. But there was no alternative for these people. There was no way I could call and they had the health service and tell them that I had uh, symptoms, you know. I think it, it's been uh, everyone thinks everyone is the same and it doesn't occur to them that someone who is deaf may also be infected with the virus. People don't think, oh, let me think, oh, maybe there's someone deaf or maybe there's someone blind. They don't think in those terms. I was trying to change that reality. If I can add something, um, uh, uh, Dave, um, I would say that, well, we have started uh, uh, researching on, the, on what are the motivations for our students to use our open educational resources. And what we have found is that they believe that they are very useful for their professional development. Right. We have like two profiles of courses. For example, the, the course on ICT, on ICT accessibility for public procurement is one example of course that is very in, interesting to, uh, for professional development because we have uh, civil work, workers, we have people from companies who are willing to sell their products uh, to, to public administration, so it's very, it's a very professional profile. On the other hand, we have some courses, for instance, the one on foundation of accessible human computer interaction, which is a very high level of, of many people are motivated because of the professional application. And at the same time, we, we have detected that it is also very interest, interesting for lecturers, for teachers who want to address their students who have uh, accessibility needs, but it's uh, very, uh, we have noticed that there is a teaching interest in these courses. And of course, they are also interest, is interesting because they are free. Uh, uh, from uh, uh, 10 to uh, 14 uh, of our students say that it's uh, attractive because they are uh, uh, for free. But on the other hand, uh, for example, the course on ICT public uh, procurement, uh, uh, more than 70% of students say that this will help them to improve their professional careers. And it's very interesting that you say how 
the, the materials you developed are not just being used by one person at a time, but lecturers and teachers are using them as part of a blended learning approach, drawing upon your resources. But how many people have used the resources? Uh, do you have some idea of how many people in total have used the training you've developed? Um, we, if you mean students, uh, we've had over 12,000 students enrolled in the past four years. These courses began in 2016. Not all of them at once. We have been adding them along the years. And about 13% of those students complete the course they selected. Regarding organization, I don't know how many have actually used the course, but we have been approached by several companies interested in some of the courses, particularly accessibility and customer service, which is a good thing. Um, also, some smartphone developers and service providers have some interest in the accessible mobile for call. They have a lot of employees dealing with customers asking questions about how accessible their phone their training is, and they don't know what to do about it. So this course may help them understand their own, the product they are selling, you know. Also, uh, we have students who are independent consultants and owners of small companies. But, uh, I think, like Alejandro said, we need to analyze it at a further. <laughs> And, and was it important to have the materials in Spanish? Right. Um, well, why did materials are in Spanish? Because for now it is addressed to the Spanish community. We are right now uh, looking for collaborators and possible partner to help us translate the courses to other languages. We realize they would be very useful all over Europe and outside of Europe. So, so far it's only in Spanish. It's very hard to get people in Spain with enough English to speak English in the video. So we need to do it in Spanish and then it's translated. And we're going to take a chance now just to watch a little bit of one of your videos um, around mobile accessibility. And one of the interesting things uh, I think we can pick up from watching this video is it's available on YouTube and you've provided subtitles, captions in Spanish. Yes. And in this case, we're going to use YouTube's automatic translation to show captions in English whilst we listen and watch the video. Um, so Rachel, perhaps uh, you could uh, show us the video and we'll, we'll watch the first few minutes of this video. We have Rachel there. Oh, Rachel's back. I apologize. My, I think my internet went out. Are we ready for the video? We are ready to go. <laughs> okay. Ready and raring.
Hi, Tim. Yeah, there should be audio with the video. For some reason, we're not picking it up. It's a, a Spanish audio track. Was the video not playing, David? Uh, we could the see the video, Rachel, but we couldn't hear uh, the soundtrack at all. But let me ask a couple of questions. Oh. Um, just whilst, whilst uh, and uh, perhaps Alejandra, these may be questions that you may be uh, able to, to help us with. Um, why did you choose to do this as video rather than text and graphics? Why was video important as the medium? Well, it's uh, our, we are using a, a standard, let's say, template or for our instructional design. It contains video. We love videos. We think videos are useful to motivate, but we are not using only videos. So right. we try to use short videos. There are some uh, works in the literature saying that should you, videos shouldn't take more than six minutes because otherwise uh, people will distract. And we try to use five minutes to 10 uh, minutes videos, but we also have text because in the text we provide the details. We only use videos to share the highlights, to attract people, but all the details are provided in the text. Then we have different types of quizzes and then we have peer-to-peer uh, -peer assessment uh, activities. So okay, that really people important. learn by seeing what others have produced and also applying rubrics to evaluate. And it's also well studied in the literature that you continue learning when you evaluate others. And, and so we have text, videos, and, um, and all, the, all, all the kind of learning activities. And very interactive, by the way you're describing it. Yes, we need to engage uh, students. Uh, people don't have much time to devote to open learning because they are at the same time, they are working, they are studying, they are uh, living. And, and, and then uh, we calculate that uh, we, they can devote like three hours a week to, our, to the learning with, uh, with us. So we try to keep them very motivated. And on the top of, of that, we, we use forum. We, we also keep our forums very active. Um, we love participations and they add uh, value to our courses. So, and we know that these forums are attracting and are engaging students. I mean, one of the things, I mean, we, we looked very briefly there at the uh, module around mobile phones and accessibility. Now, that is one of the most fast moving areas of technology and access. How do you try to keep your materials up to date with whatever our mobile manufacturers are announcing this week? Well, we have two kinds of videos. We try to produce our videos with separating what are the foundations of the knowledge and the practical and the practicalities. We cannot afford to update videos every year because videos are costly. Um, uh, we have our our colleagues at the uh, audiovisual uh, media and Adunet, they, they produce a fantastic work, but it takes a lot of resources. Yes. So we differentiate the, the foundation. But in the case of technology, of real use of technology, we want students to uh, perceive how people with disabilities interact with technology, because it gives you a first impression of why accessible technology is so useful. You are right. Uh, we are using, like in the, the case of this video, we were using an Android 
uh, Android operating system that will be uh, out of date uh, in, in but most of the of the uh, features that we have been using remain so maybe we will we don't we will we will not have to update this video until two or three years so it's not bad but the the, the main message is we ask authors when they write their scripts to keep the videos for the foundations of the learning and then deal with the details in the text or in the activities and, and it was great to hear from natalie uh, and yourself that these are free training materials they're open to everybody and that you're looking for people to translate um, but how much did it cost to create the resources and how are you planning or trying uh, to keep to, to sustain yeah. that in the future well the training cost the foundation about 60 and 100,000 euros um, depending on what it needed to be done as of the money is provided by the royal board on disability but um, we don't charge the students for attending the courses however they can purchase a certificate completion if they want to uh, it's just 15 euros. They also have the opportunity to buy one credit to stand toward their GPA. Um, it costs 40 euros. And I, I, I'm interested to know, have you got any examples or stories of people who have used the materials that you find especially exciting or pleasing? Well, the, the nature of the training makes it very hard for us to get a sample or suspect stories because some of the students are abroad. Um, we are in Madrid, a lot of students are all over Spain. So it's kind of hard. But uh, we, have, we have received some feedback through the forum and there was this student who is the president of the homeowner board of the building where he lives. And he too, the accessible housing course. So he was amazed at uh, what everything he could do to make the building where he lived accessible. He was very happy about the course. I would also think that I will depend that they suggest that some large companies and government agencies have some interest in the training. I think this is very important. They are willing to have their employees learn about accessibility and design for all, and that would make a big difference in this society. Um, another suggest is that we had a professor from the University of Salamanca, which is a local prestigious institution, and she is interested in developing a course with us. So I think it will be cool. Alejandra, did you have anything, any examples that you were really pleased with? Well, I'm just reading now the forum. Um, one of my colleagues who are uh, giving the, the, the support in the forums has just sent over a message to me. And it was a, um, a person who says, uh, I'm very grateful for participating in this training. I must admit that the digital world presents some difficulty for me, but this course offers support. I am learning many new things that I am already applying in my telework. You must put this in the context of the current situation. Well, for three months, everyone has worked remotely in Spain. She is a physical therapist and she's wondering how will I become uh, part of this digital world? Mm. And she's happy that we are supporting her. I, I, I must add that during this, uh, period of uh, mobility restriction, all the courses of, uh, by Fundación Once have remained open. And I believe that it has had a, a significant impact. Many people who need to do this transition to the, to the digital way of living. And I, I think that's, that's interesting. Another area which I find uh, important is the resilience of resources and services during a time of crisis. That may be an, an emergency or conflict, but in this case, it's been COVID and the pandemic. And the fact that those resources and training have been able to be maintained 
through the crisis suggests a strength and a resilience that is actually really important to learn from. In a moment, I'm going to ask Rachel if we could perhaps see um, a second video, uh, maybe the video, the short video on uh, customer service. Rachel, if you can uh, get that one ready for us. Uh, and Alejandro, if we don't have any sound, maybe you could just tell us a little bit about what's happening on the screen if there's no sound there. Sure. But before we do that, and whilst that's being set up, where do you want to take this idea, this innovation in the future, what's next for the accessibility training you've created? Well, we have um, Natalie. Do you want to take this one? Yeah. Um, and, and I will compliment. Thank you. <laughs> well, um, I share that training. The, the video, are you, are you going to show it? David, are you going to show the video? We're going, in a moment, we're going to show the customer service video, the short one. I'll let you answer this oh, question. Okay. First. Well, uh, I chose it because the video, a lot of people have the idea the customer service is limited to the phone. And we wanted to show that people actually go to places and that places have to be accessible for people with mobility issues. Um, if you can repeat the next question, because I, I forget it. What, yeah, what, are there, what more do you want to do with the resource? Are there new courses, new audiences? What's the, what's the future for the course? Yes, we have one new course coming out this year. It's about uh, how to teach design for all in university, in college. Um, be, at least in Spain, it's not a topic available on the majors and minors taught here. So we think it's very important for future for, for professionals to know about design for all and accessibility. I think the society and the world moving towards a more accessible world, you know. For example, um, text, for example, Zoom is a great platform for, for uh, communication online. But captioning is not available in Spanish, for instance. We, we use Zoom for the foundation event, but we have to hire someone to come actually type down everything people say because it's not available. So we want those professionals to know that when you make a product, technological product, you have to think of accessibility for everyone, not just from the people of your language, you know, you have to keep, keep it open for everyone. That's more like the point. Yeah. I'm not sure if I, I got yeah. my point across. I would like to add to that um, a couple of, of things. Please. That, um, um, okay, first of all, all these, all, uh, because our students are asking us to um, to have the, the digital contents, the digital materials available, not only in the platform. So we have started producing them also as eBooks. So they have been packed in uh, EPUB format. So they, I think, we, and we love the, the, the bookshelf uh, reader that you recently presented in your, in your webinars. This is fantastic uh, work they, they have done. Um, so they are, we are producing this new, this new product. So far we have produced three our courses. They are already available uh, as EPUBs. Also, we need to learn, we also are doing some research on, on this. So we want to learn what are the barriers and the solutions in open online education for learners with disabilities. So yeah. this is something we are learning from. Um, and this is also very important. And also, how can our learners become active agents on accessibility? They are learning the basic facts, strategies, resources, instruments to produce accessible products and services. How can we motivate them to keep on doing that on the internet? And, and 
we are still thinking how can this uh, be done but we have already uh, um, submitted a, a paper on how they they participate in uh, evaluating the accessibility of, of captions and producing captions and it has worked very well and we are plan also to do some research on how people can collaborate to evaluate the accessibility of images and videos Excellent. and then let's see what comes next yeah well let's take a look at a, oh, a, we another have video. Here. <laughs> um, we're going to take a look at this customer service video um, and uh, Alejandro as I say if if we don't hear the sound perhaps you can talk us through the video a little bit in the background sure um, Rachel do you want to queue up that video for us yes I want to make sure I put the sound on <laughs> okay ah, I can see the I can see the icon this time no we had nothing but I can explain it it's um, not letting me share my screen. Just whilst Rachel's getting that ready for us, there's been a couple of questions around autism and whether or not your training materials and your uh, approach includes people with autism. Um, is it, can you tell us anything about that? Um, yes, we have a course we launched last this year. We launched it in February. We give the opportunity to students to take it in easy read. Format. But it's not about autism. It's about uh, what to do when you are discriminated again. So right. someone with autism can see and understand the course by selecting the history mode that is available. There are two modes, history and the original version in Spanish. In Spain, we have a law, a standard on history. So we apply it to the course. I, we are very, very happy. For, for this course, because a lot of people we had received a lot of students, more than we expected, near a thousand students. And it's being available in February. So it's a lot of people. Okay. Um, Rachel, are we ready to show this one? I think I am. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, go for it. Go for it. That's what I say. Okay. I've come. <laughs> Este vídeo se titula Atención presencial con Esther Ramiro del área de accesibilidad universal e innovación de Fundación 11, escrito por María del Carmen García, consultora experta en accesibilidad. because the doors are not automatic. I look like a bit heavy. Yeah.
Hey, thank you very much. And I, I think, you know, we can see really clearly there some of the potential barriers yeah. in accessing a service uh, that the woman is engaged and some of the ways in which those have been met. And in the discussion, as Alejandro was saying, some of the things that we might want to think about that perhaps, for instance, the weight of the door, automatic door openers uh, might have needed to be considered as well. So it's quite a wide range of issues from a very short video clip. Yes, we, we asked our teacher, or the, the, the person who was authoring <coughs> this, she is an expert where we have like three experts from uh, ONSE Foundation producing this. And what we ask them, put some elements of accessibility in customer service into this video. And we, we this video is, is to trigger uh, some activities in the course, for instance, some discussions in the forum or a peer-to-peer -peer evaluation activity where we are proposing students to assess what are the good things, the bad things, uh, from the accessibility uh, viewpoint that are happening in the video and what are the potential solutions. So this is a kind of video that is um, supporting material for several learning activities. And I've seen in the chat um, a few people just asking us, Natalie, how do they get to find uh, the materials and to look at them and to try them out? Uh, where's the best place for them to start? Well, you have to, material is still available on the website. Um, and maybe I can post the website on the chat and the thing get access to it. The website where you can get a list of courses and you can register and then you can get access to the videos, the text, and the quizzes and exams and everything. And, and so seem to maybe if you Add that to the WhatsApp link. chat as well, those links. Yes, <laughs> and uh, if you type Fundación 11 UNED in Google, you will get, but we will type that in the chat so that it's clear. Perfect, thank you. That will be really helpful. Um, I want to, uh, again, just to encourage anyone, if you've got any specific questions uh, you would like to ask uh, Natalie and Alejandro, uh, do please uh, let us know in the next couple of minutes because we're coming towards the end of our interview now. Um, but I'm interested. I often get asked about people who would like to do more around accessibility, but don't really know where to start. What advice would you give to people as to what uh, what is the best starting place for learning about disability access and accessibility? Well, I think the, the best starting place is to know about the real needs of people with disabilities and to keep in mind that two people with the same disability have different needs. This is what diversity is about. And what well, work for one person may not work for the other. So when you are developing a technology, you have to keep that in mind. For example, uh, I mean, uh, I'm going to put an example to physical situation. I go to a conference and there is a sign language interpreter, but there is no captioning. So I don't get information. I don't understand what's going on at the time. But I, I need to read the captioning. There is an example of when people think, okay, there will be deaf people, I will add a uh, sign language interpreter and problem solved. No, problem is not solved. So you need to think, you know, get out of the box, think outside the box in a broader perspective of what the real needs are. I think it's also important to keep stereotypes in check and to make sure you're not relying on a stereotypical image or idea of a person with disability. We are still seeing many solutions out there that are based on stereotypes. It is a good thing that they are becoming increasingly less common, but it's still an issue. Also, when working with technology, it is essential to understand how people with disabilities use technology 
species is different. And, and what is the device they use when, for example, they navigate a website or a cell phone? And how those devices work? This is very important when you are developing a website or an application and you want to make it accessible for people with disabilities. And is there, we're coming to our last question, really, as it's really very close to the end. Um, is there anything else you would like the audience to know about the work you've done, the work you might do in the future, uh, and what they can uh, best re remember from everything you've told us? Well, I would like them to know that this training is 100% accessible. The website complies with the latest version of the web content accessibility guideline, the 2.1. It's level AA and can be accessed with screen readers and other devices. Um, we also, I would also like to highlight that regarding intellectual accessibility, like I mentioned before, students who enroll in the core disability active electric legal defense have the choice to take electric reading. The truth is that intellectual disabilities are soft and forgotten and it's time to begin doing something about it. We think this is the first time a course like this it is offered in it is Yeah. Alejandro, would you like to add anything? Well, not what? much to add, only okay. that uh, all our courses are currently open, they are free, and they can be accessed because of this special situation we are living throughout the world. They are open until September, and then uh, we ask you to visit them. They are in Spanish, uh, you know, but, uh, but they are uh, waiting for you. Use them, and um, I, we hope they are useful. I can see there's a, a couple of questions, um, particularly coming from India, which is quite exciting, and uh, welcome. It's, it's a great pleasure to have you here. Uh, I'm going to just suggest on the questions from India, because they're really quite interesting. But perhaps uh, you could join the WhatsApp group um, and ask those questions there, um, because we're, I think we're going to run out of time before we can answer those today. Um, so please join the WhatsApp group. Um, perhaps Seema or Rachel, you could just post the link to the WhatsApp group again towards the end. Um, very, very good questions. Let me uh, just begin to draw together uh, what we've discussed today. The importance of training. I've, I've been working in the field uh, of accessibility for some 30 years. And Natalie said to me a week ago, how important it still is to train and make people aware of accessibility and access issues around the world. You would believe perhaps that after 30 years of training resources, that perhaps this need wasn't so great. But I think we can see the questions uh, that are coming up on the chat, as well as the comments that Natalie and Alejandro have made. The need for training is still as strong as ever. And I can see from what people are saying how much they welcome the training that you're offering. And I think you, you'll see a lot of people wanting to uh, talk to you more about making that training available more widely. Uh, so first of all, can we just please just thank Natalie and Alejandro for their contribution today. And uh, also, can I just say, can we also just thank uh, Rachel and Seema and others for some slightly more complicated technical issues than usual. Uh, which they've dealt with very well. So please, our thanks to everybody uh, would be great. Well, thank you for having us. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. I thank do hope much. that we will uh, joy see some of you next week in our third seminar. Next week's seminar, I think, is going to be uh, another really quite interesting and exciting one. Um, and uh, it's really going to revolve around... Uh, developments that have come out of Greece around accessible digital games for people with a visual impairment. 
Um, and I think it'll be very interesting to see what we can learn from that experience and draw that together with what we learned from Bookshare, from Onthe, and what we all know and bring to the discussion. Just want to hand back finally to Michael and Chris for any closing comments. And again, to say genuinely, Natalie, Alejandro, thank you so much for everything you've shared with us today. Michael. Thank you. Chris. I just want to um, thank our speakers and David, nice job. I want to thank our captioners and do join us next week um, for our third um, webinar and um, have a good rest of the evening, day or morning. Take care. Okay. <laughs>